Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Oh, we're so glad that you are here with us today. Welcome to the gathering. We're so glad to have the well behind me, or they will be up here in just a second. All right. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us as well. One of the things I wanted to t uh, talk with you all uh, on the, just, y'all just chill out. Uh, back at, um, there, there is over, but anywhere between 80 and 120 people that watch uh, Christ of the Hills online. Is there a prayer request that you need for us to pray about? Okay. And so what I'm looking at you is to check out the, the, the website. Uh, my email address is uh, chappy93 at gmail.com. If you want to email me a, a prayer request, go right ahead. If uh, you would like to have Holy Communion and you do not receive it yet, please give us a call or email me and we'll try to make sure that we get it over to wherever you are especially if you're in the village. If you're in Montana watching this, you know, <laughs> we're so glad that you're worshiping with us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for this is our, I, 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 I put a plea out for first service uh, to see how many would, would sign up for the prayer vigil. The last time I saw it this morning before first service was that from midnight until I think 4 a.m. or something like that, there was open slots, and then 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of room for security and safety. Now, a lot of people have asked me questions, what, what does that mean? The only door that's going to be accessible for people is that one out there, through that Sunday school room and out that door. We'll have signs and stuff like that. Um, there, all the other doors will be locked. People will park up here in the top parking lot. If you are praying through the night uh, and coming in to do so, uh, then what we like to do is have somebody else in the building. It just makes us feel good, okay? Um, if this 40 years ago, 50 years ago, we probably wouldn't even have to bother with this. But in today's time, it's just kind of added, added safety. What we want from the security people is to, when they see a hit, at the beginning of the hour, to go out, walk with the people coming into the church, and then as they get ready to leave, to walk them back out to their cars just to keep them safe, okay? But those prayer times, do not think at all that, Pastor, there is no way I can pray for one hour. My guess would be is that when the time the hour is over with, you're going, wait a minute, I'm not done. And, and so what I would encourage, and this is what I encourage, if you're not finished, keep on praying. If someone comes in and they start station one, that's fine. Keep on praying. If you want to pray for the next hour, keep on praying. Because I firmly believe, brothers and sisters, that this nation and this world needs prayer. Okay? And so, so I, I, I just, someone asked me uh, earlier, um, it, you know, well, we won't be around. Can I pray from? Well, yeah. If if you'd like to do that, I'll give you the prayer stations, the, the titles to it. Okay, but but I know the first prayer station is Thanksgiving. Man, how can could we not pray for 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 12 minutes, however it works out, and just thank God? I think that's where we got to start. But at the end of the prayer vigil, the last place is to pray for yourself because we're real easy to pray for everybody else. But then we need to pray for us. What is it in us that we need prayer for? And I'm just asking you to just get, you know, buck naked honest on this, okay? Because I'm willing to wager probably if I, if I was a betting man is that there's probably something in a closet deep in our soul that we sit there and we locked up and going, Lord, I am not letting this out because I don't want anybody to know about it. And that's okay. That's not everybody's going to hear this. But between you and God, if you need to bring it to the surface so he takes it away, you know, I, I love that illustration. I really do. Is the lady was doing a, a Bible study and they got to that passage where it talks about a silversmith and a purifier of silver. And... So she went into an actual silversmith to find out what that means. And he said, well, first of all, we take this called flux, and it helps take those impurities and helps bring them out and separates it from the silver. And she went, 
ooh, like the Holy Spirit. And said, then what I do is I put it in the center of the hottest part of that flame. And said, now one thing that you got to know about is I can't leave that because if I leave it and get busy with something else, I've ruined everything. So I stay there and I watch it until all of that stuff has been brought up. And then I take it and remove it. And she went, oh, isn't that kind of neat how our God does that too? He stays right with us to bring all that out. She thought she had enough to go back to the Bible study and said, man, I thank you so much. Started walking out the door. The silversmith ran over there and said, ma'am, you forgot the, one of the most important parts. And she said, well, what's that? He says, I don't stop purifying until I can see my reflection in the silver. Hmm. Oh, honey, hush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so for us to be in that prayer time, I think that's one where we just keep, you know, in that time of prayer until God can see his reflection in us. And so well, I want you to, and it's out there in the Welcome Center. Um, if you don't know, go past the office uh, and, and go to that next big area. It's got a big uh, countertop and stuff like that. On the back wall, there's a place for prayer, uh, the, the prayer vigil. There's signups and stuff like that. Now, here's the thing. What if, you know, hey, pastor, two o'clock in the morning, that's when I really get up and get energized. I'd like to come in and pray at that time, but there's somebody's name already there. Sign your name. It's not going to be no problem. If we had 15 people at 2 a.m. praying for the, the nation and praying for all kinds of things, wouldn't that be awesome? Mm. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> if there's your spot is taken, go ahead and sign up in another spot, in another spot or sign up in that spot, Okay. Do you have to be a member of this church to do this? Oh, no. I just need somebody who knows that their Lord and Savior loves them and, believe, and they believe in him. That's what my litmus test is. Okay? Because it doesn't work if you don't believe in Jesus. Or it really doesn't. Okay? And so, so that's all about that. Uh, take a look at all of this. Um, Undy Sunday on the very back of this, they had a lot of different good things. Uh, over $2,400 was donated um, and it covers so many different areas. It was great. Um, if you are brand new to our church and you have heard the term Undy Sunday, no, we did not all dress in our underwear and come. That was my first. I tell you what, brothers and sisters, I've heard of Pajama Sunday. And then they were doing Undy Sunday, and I'm going, oh, no, 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 no. The bishop, there's no way the bishop can sanctify this. This is no way. But, but yeah, they, they, they got a bunch of stuff for uh, the, the schools and systems and things of that nature. And so that was, that was very good. Do you have a, 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 a celebration you want to share this morning? Yes. Yes, yes, got families, good reports from families. Uh, we have one of our choir members um, who thought that they may have something on his pancreas, and it's just a benign cyst, and so it's not, so yeah, we give God praise, give God praise for healing. Who else has got a celebration? I thought I saw another hand. Yes. Steve's getting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Steve. Yes. <coughs> yes. It's walking better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. Praise be to God. Yeah. Yeah. We had some visitors today that we met Friday night at the Lake Point. We'll talk to them every week. All right. We're glad to have you with us. Yes. 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 Not sure who everybody is, but that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Because here's, here's the interesting part of it. Uh, when you walked in the door... In the first seven seconds, you determine whether or not you're going to like it. <laughs> no, that's statistics. And the next 30 seconds will determine whether or not you're going to come back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wild, isn't it? It's wild. And so if, if any church in the world, and all churches should be, they should be a welcoming church. They really should be. Yes. Yes. Anybody else have a celebration? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. But walking outside and not seeing the lightning, but hearing the thunder, yeah, I just kind of made you one of those lightning surprises, and you know, you're, oh, yeah, you didn't like that, so, yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. Celebrated their 14th birthday, but had a possibility of not being here on this earth. Yes, all right. Praise be to God. Oh, give God some praise. Yeah, give God some praise. Yes. Oh, I, I, I am like an auctioneer. I see you move. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick you out, brother. I really am. It's all right. See, most of these people have learned. They sit on their hands going, I ain't moving. I ain't moving. I ain't moving. I got one. It yes. is good to have Doug with us today. Yeah, glad to have Doug with us. Yeah. Playing guitar. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. You'll hear him in just a little bit. You know, he does a little Chuck Berry across the stage. <laughs> just, you know, just, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it just, uh, that's all right. All right. Well, one of our great celebrations is, and, and, and I hope that everybody has signed the connection pads and, and brought them over. If, and when you signed them, uh, tear out that sheet because when we pass around the, the offering uh, baskets, uh, you can place, bless you, we can place uh, that in, as well as your offering in this basket. So let's take up God's tithes and offerings at this time. In our time of prayer, um, we like to just lift up names. That if you have a name uh, that you want to lift up, uh, my son Josh, uh, we thank you for the prayers for him. He was traveling, um, and and just lift up those prayers of those names. You got a name that you want to lift up? Yes, Susan. Susan. Bob, Sarah, and Travel Mercies. Bob, Sarah, and Travel Mercies. Terry Anderson. Terry Anderson. Jennifer and Danny? Jacinta. Jacinta. Okay. David and Don. David and Don. Heron. Heron. Aaron. 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 Thank you. Alistair and Atlas. Alistair and Atlas. Okay. Carolyn and Tim. Carolyn and Tim. Steve. Taff. Taff. Candy. Candy. The boys in the wreck. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I saw you. I, okay, I, like I said, I see, I see people move. I'm, I'm gonna. Have, yes. Lael. Lael. Okay. 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 Any others? Um. I and I should address this with you all. Um, is that uh, one of the announcements we were. Uh, Reverend Sig and the Finance Committee will be sending out letters uh, to everybody, so you should receive a letter in a couple of days. Please take note of that. Please that, and keep keep Christ of the Hills in your prayers. Okay, if you would please. All right. Any others? Yes. Doug. Doug? Okay. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we just thank you so much for being an awesome God. How awesome are you? There's nothing that you can't do. There's no hill that you can't climb. There's no mountain that you can't move. There's no situation that you don't know about. And so what we try to do in our worship time is make that connection of how awesome you are. There's no way we do it. We're going to come up short. But Father, what, what an idea that not only do we talk about you and preach about you and pray about you and sing about you, help us to connect our hearts with your awesomeness, your power, your strength, your grace, your mercy, your love, your forgiveness. And Father, we're just family. We may not know everybody's names, but we're family. We're all brothers, blood brothers and sisters. 
of what you've done on the cross. And so, thank you. Father, we do ask that for this week that you would help us in our ministries and our passions, our lives. We need to set up for the prayer vigil. And Lord, we want to construct it in such a way that we have such a safe place to pray. And the hearts are solid in praying. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for opportunities. And we have the opportunity of hearing these names that are mentioned. We don't know their, their situations or their circumstances. But you do. Part of one of the reasons why you're so awesome. So, Father, we ask that you would touch them from the very top of their head down to the bottom of their feet. Take care of their emotional, their physical, their spiritual needs. And, Father, for us right here, I'm willing to wager, Lord, that there's some prayer concerns in us. So search our hearts. Open the opportunities for us to take that and bring it to the surface so that we may have you remove the ugly dross. And Father, when it's all said and done, oh, I pray that you will see your reflection in each one of us. Father, we pray this in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand and let us start our first song. I got some greeting for some of you. Good morning. Has it been a long night? Maybe been a long year? Maybe been a hard life? Maybe you're just not right. If you got a little red in your eyes, you've come to the right place. People like you, people like me, this is where we all find grace. Come on now. Bet you want to sing hallelujah. Bet you want to say amen. Can't help but celebrate being born again. Somebody who loves you is waiting at the door. It's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. Take a look. Sing it with us. Bet you want to sing hallelujah. Bet you want to sing amen. Can't help but celebrate being born again. Somebody who loves you is waiting at the door. It's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. Bring your heartache, bring your burden. You can lay them down at the door. There is no fear. You belong here. Slip into the house of the Lord. Bring your heartache. Bring your burden. You can lay them down at the door. There is no fear. You belong here. Stay into the house of the Lord. Here we go. Bet you want to sing hallelujah. Bet you say an amen. Can't help but celebrate being born again. Somebody who loves you is waiting at the door, yeah. It's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. 
And we hope that is for everybody, not just those who have been having trouble, okay? You're here to celebrate God, amen? You're here to praise him. So let's praise him. All the earth will sing your praises. One, two. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I forgot we got a change of guitar here. Yeah, put your hands together. Help the band out. You've heard this one before, most of you. Sing with us. You lived, you died, you said in three days you would rise. You did, you're alive. Amen, Lord. Thank you. You came down, Lord. You saved us through the cross. Our hearts are changed. Our hearts are changed because of your great love. You live. You die. You die. You said it three You're going to rise. You did. Yes, you're alive. Again. And I know, I know yes, you, you will. will. All the earth will sing your praises.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Remain standing with us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him would not perish. That's the basic, the foundation, but he is also with us in everything we do. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. All right. God so loved. <laughs> Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved, sing with us, church, come on. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. open arms for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of hell forever defeated now it is well I'm walking God's amazing love. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done, for creating the world. And when it was in havoc, as it's been so many times, you've been right there through your spirit to work it out, Lord. Please, in this time of the world, we ask, and we know you love us, please work it out again, Lord. Please. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, you may be seated. That's good. That's good. I can't wait for people to see this on videotape because we have Hulk Hogan at the guitar. <laughs> I looked at you and I'm going, oh man, you have a striking resemblance to him. Well, maybe from the neck up, but I mean, yeah, yeah, just, it just, wow. I, and I, dude, I, I, you know, yeah, I, that, it's like Hulk Hogan is getting down on the guitar. It's just, it's like, wow. Um, 
But brother, I, I will tell you, I will tell you this. Yeah, you, uh, you have a gift and you add so much to this. This, uh, So thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, yes. Uh, our scripture passage comes out of the Gospel of John, the third chapter, beginning in verse 1 and going to verse 21. In honor of the Gospel, I know you all sit down, but would you please rise again as you are able and let us read this. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish council, ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are an Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man, just as Moses lifted it up, the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And will you bow your heads in prayer? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you would humbly place me as an instrument of your grace and in the shadow of your cross. Father, I pray that you would rescue me from me. Place in me all that you need for me to be in me. That my words are your words. That this message is not my message, it's your message. And may it bridge where it needs to bridge. But Father, in all of this, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, no glory given to me. No, in that regard, O oh Lord, Make me absolutely nothing. And all glory goes to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Our fan or follower series is number two that we're, we're going to talk about. Our title of this is Decision or a Commitment. Okay. Now, there was a gentleman who had bought a house a long time ago. He had lived there for 43 years. And in this, he had it all done. Beautiful decor, great things on the walls, had all of this. It was his dream house. And it, he did it in his personality. There's one room, he loved the desert, and so, so he put it in this kind of a Phoenix and, and Arizona motif, and then he liked other things and stuff. It was his. It was, it was all his. Those things it was, he had he'd captured in those 43 years to make this home his home. He knew where everything was at. It was great. 
but the house was big. Because the house was so big, he decided, he, you know what, I'm, I, I, I got some area in the house kind of off to the side, and, and, and we, could, we could share a kitchen, we could do that. I, I think I'll open it to rent. And so he put an advertisement out, and there was a knock on the door just a, a few days after that, and it was Jesus. He said, I would like to rent the room that you have available. And he went, okay, all right, that's not a problem. He said, well, can you pay? He said, yeah, that's no problem. And I'll pay the month in advance, and I'll pay for, you know, and all that. And he, he started living there. It was good. They would meet in the kitchen. They would have coffee together. Things... Every day there was a little bit of an influence of Jesus in this guy's life. Well, not long after that, then Jesus said, since I love the place to rent, I love my room, I love everything about it, would it be all right if I changed some things to make it more me? And the guy went, hmm, I don't know, I spent a lot of time in that room to make that room that room. But I'll concede, you know, you're living there. You put some stuff up that you, that you want. It's okay. Can I put nails in the walls? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I hang pictures? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can I change the sheets? Well, I guess. Kind of takes away the, the motif of that room a little bit. But all right, go right ahead. So Jesus made these changes. And, and the guy was, it was a little uneasy, you know, the, the new things that were happening. It, it didn't seem like it started to be his house anymore, but he conceded. He paid rent on time, no problem, didn't leave garbage out or leave his clothes around. It's all right. It's pretty cool. And after a number of years, Jesus said, I want to buy this house. Would you consider selling it? He said, now here's the condition is I want you to continue to live in it. But I want the whole house. And the guy said, well, you've been pretty good. Okay, I'll consider it. I'll consider uh, this house. And so they, they, they made up an agreement that, that stated the man that can continue to live with, so they drew up a deed. They drew up this deed for this house, and he sold it to Jesus. Jesus put the deed in his pocket, always kept it around in, in, in where he, wherever he went in that house. But it wasn't very long that then a, a wall that was non-supportive, he knocked the wall down to open it up to some more of the sunshine. He put a, a sky roof in and he started moving things and changing things. He was changing the motif, all the landscaping that this guy did hours and hours of work to get that. Jesus tilled it all up and he put it in a swimming pool. To say the least, this man was a little upset. But as he saw more and more of his life that he put into this place, change and change and change, he had to finally come up to Jesus and said, you know what? I don't know why you're doing all this. What I had in here was perfectly good. And Jesus said, I don't want to be Lord of just over a room in your life. I want to Lord every area of your life. But I don't think I can go along with this. And he pulls his deed and says, do you want your deed back? Do you hear me, church? Do you hear me? So it is with Nicodemus. We look at this story, this event. Nicodemus, are you a fan or a follower? Did he make a decision or a commitment? Now, Nicodemus, he would be the one on the right if you're looking at the picture, okay? Um, well known, well respected, man of God, member of the Sanhedrin. Elite group of community and religious leaders, been an admirer of Jesus for some time, but kept it all secret. He listened to his teachings and witnessed miracle after miracle, but it wasn't just his power that he was impressed with. It was his compassion and his love. Ready to take this relationship to the next level, 
was not going to be easy because Nicodemus would have a lot to lose if he went public with this knowledge. What would people think of this man of God that was following this homeless carpenter who turned rabbi from a nothing town called Nazareth? Nothing good ever comes out of Nazareth. One of his disciples said that. But being a secret admirer, it never costs anything. You can be a secret admirer of anybody. But when you become a follower, it comes with a high price tag. It always does. In Nicodemus's case, he would lose his position in the Sanhedrin. He would lose many of his friends. He would lose his reputation. And he would lose probably family members. We know at this point that he was just a fan. But how do we know that? Well, what time of the day did he come to see Jesus? At night. Why? Because nobody could see him. Okay? You cannot put your understanding of going through downtown hot springs as it would be here. Because it's bright. You could see things from blocks away in hot springs. But... At night, hiding in the shadows, he wouldn't have been seen. Why? Because he didn't want anybody to know that he was there. We've never been in a situation like that, have we? And then he used the word we. Now, most people would think, well, we, what's wrong with we? Because if you use the word we, then that takes away from me. We are wondering... And really what he needed to say was, I was wondering. Speaking as if he is the voice of a group, but not really looking at himself. Now, fans are always happy to follow Jesus as long as it doesn't require any significant changes or have a negative imp implications. And the reality check, and here's the reality check. You need to hear this reality check. There's no way to follow Jesus without him interfering with your life. Amen? There's no way of following Jesus without him interfering with your life. Now, if you're a fan of Jesus, it's okay. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. To be a follower, mm, that's something else. One must be born again, says Jesus. That was hard for Nicodemus to hear. You know, see, he memorized the Torah, he, the, the Pentateuch. He memorized that when he was a boy. And he spent his life building a religious resume. Jesus makes it clear that Nicodemus' righteous acts and his rituals and all that he did is not the measurement that he is using Nicodemus must humble himself and be born again into a, a whole new way of life. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus or a commitment? Well, should there be much difference in that? Well, yeah. Yeah. Many have made a decision to follow Jesus or to believe in Jesus without asking for a commitment to follow. But the gospel allows no distractions, no, no dis, 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 disarray from that, no distinction from that. Jesus never offered such an opinion. He said, if you're going to believe in me, I need you to follow me. The words belief, uh, five times in the New Testament, Jesus says, believe in me. Over 20 times does he say, follow me. But when we make the decision but not the commitment to follow him. We are nothing really more than fans, are we? You see, it's a movement. Kyle Eidelman in his book, Not a Fan, writes this. One of the reasons our churches have, can become fan factories is that we separated the message of believe from the message of follow. After separating the two messages, they get out of balance. There, but there's always a cost of following. We see it throughout Scripture. Now, you, you can't take Scripture as a chronological order. 
Every book, every chapter had a purpose, and that purpose was to lead you to God. Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha, it doesn't matter. It all was to lead you to God. And so we look at this. Moses couldn't follow God without standing in front of Pharaoh. Noah couldn't follow God without building an ark and bringing on ridicule from all the neighbors. Can you imagine if you'd done that today? Well, I guess they have done that, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. But have we ever done that? Or have, checking back in your life, have you ever done something that caused people to ridicule you? Oh, I have. Yeah. One year at, at Halloween, we passed out Christian tracts. And the church hated us for it. Another year, we decided to give mom and dads a break. We told them to come around to the back part of the house because there was wooded area and fields behind our house. We set up a fire pit, and we offered the kids hot dogs and s'mores and coffee and hot chocolate for the adults with a lawn chair involved. They loved it. The church thought it was a disgrace. The next year for Halloween, we weren't home. And we got tired of the ridicule. That happens. Daniel couldn't follow God by praying to him alone without being thrown into a lion's den. Following Jesus isn't something you can do at night where no one notices. What did it cost you to follow Jesus? You ever thought about that? What did it cost you? I, I ask that question when I look at Facebook. Okay? And, and somewhere along the line, there are people who are friends of mine now that weren't friends of mine in high school. Why? Because they were the spawn of Satan. <laughs> they were. These are horrible people. And somewhere along the line, God grabbed a hold of them and they all of a sudden changed. They're leading prayer groups. They're leading Bible studies. And I'm going... What happened? <laughs> and I wonder if they had any ridicule when they first said, I believe. Because they had a reputation in high school. What did it cost you to follow Jesus or are you just a fan? You see, there's no forgiveness without repentance. Repentance. No salvation without surrender. No life without death. No believing without committing. Fans don't mind Jesus doing a little touch-up work, but Jesus wants a complete renovation. Fans come to Jesus thinking a tune-up, and Jesus wants an overhaul. Fans think a little makeup, and Jesus is saying a makeover. So whatever happens to Nicodemus? You ever wonder that? Well, church history showed that he was martyred in the first century. But there's two accounts in Scripture where Nicodemus goes from fan to follower. John 7, verses 45 through 52 is the first one. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees who asked them, Why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards replied. You mean he has deceived you also, the Pharisees retorted? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed in him? No. But this mob that knows nothing of the law, there is a curse on them. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier and who was one of their own number, asked, Does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? And they replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. And then John 19, verses 39 through 40. 
He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. Can you imagine what took place when Nicodemus during that day, went in, took Jesus' body off of there, washed his body, anointed him, wrapped him, and put him in a grave, and he did it in front of everybody. Brothers and sisters, Nicodemus went from fan to follower. How about you? How about you? Nicodemus believed that Jesus and lived in the dark. Now he has moved into the light. If you have believed in darkness, Jesus now invites you to follow him in the light. Are you making a decision for Christ or are you making a commitment? And you know, that question gets really weird look on people's face. Pastor, I have been a member of the church for years. I have been a part of every committee. Yeah, are you a fan or a follower? I know Albert Pujols hit 700 because I'm a fan. And I'm not really a strong fan until October. <laughs> and I love the game of baseball. But we're not talking about that, are we? In your Christian walk, if you think about it, have you made a decision to believe or have you made a commitment? We make the decision to believe, but then there's that next step, a commitment. What in your house would you need to change? What in your house is Jesus wanting to change? Or do you want the deed back? Will you bow your heads in prayer? Almighty and gracious God, we come to you and we thank you. Father, I thank you for speaking to the hearts of folks. I watch some of their facial reactions. I almost think I couldn't hit them any harder with a ball bat because they're thinking. They're thinking in their hearts. They're thinking in their souls. They're thinking about their lives. Father God, I can't do anything about the past because the past is the past. We're right here in the present, and we have a future. Father God, I pray that those that you're speaking to will know that in the present, you are their king. You are their, their Lord. You are everything. You are the, oh, Prince of Peace. Right here in the present. So if they made a decision, help them make a commitment. And take it to the next level. Father, thank you for speaking to us. And it's in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able for our closing song? It's in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, my life, it's in you, Lord, my strength, it's in you, Lord, my hope, it's in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, I will praise you with all of my life, I will praise
Y'all, if that didn't light your fire, your wood's wet. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we're so glad that you have joined us in worship. So glad that you joined us in worship as well. Oh, yeah. Now you got that earworm in your head, and you're just sitting there, and just bopping. Wouldn't that be cool, Reverend Sig sitting there going, what happened to the gathering? They're all just bopping out like this. You know, that'd be, that'd be kind of awesome. Yeah, it really would be. All right. You have six days before we meet again. Six days. Allow God to shape you and mold you and do with you. May his light shine within you. May you be so bright that people don't see you. They don't see you. They don't see you. They see Jesus through you. That decision, make it a commitment. Go in his grace. Amen. Come, are you weary? Come, are you thirsty? Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come, are you sinners? Come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him. Let's take it home. For 